Welcome to DFCC's Know and Grow. We have today a man who is hard to catch. Former Sri Lanka captain and CRNFC's number 8 and now Royal College assistant coach and also the strength and conditioning coach. It's none other than Dushant Luke. Luke has had an illustrious career in playing for clubs and also as a Sri Lanka's rugby captain. And now he is moving into coaching. So we thought today find out more about Dushant Luke. Luke Thank you for coming to the Papa Rodriguez. We all dream a lot. Some people dream about tomorrow in five years' time, yeah. in ten years' time. Back in days, what did you dream? Uh, actually, at the start of my career playing for Sri Lanka, I mean, uh, one of my biggest uh, dreams was to uh, maybe one day play in a World Cup with the national side. Uh, well, uh, well, we actually managed to qualify in 2001 for the Junior World Cup, so that that was kind of like a dream a dream come true but uh, making it with the Sri Lanka side would have been you know awesome so yeah indeed uh, that tournament is in Chile if I'm not mistaken and you all had a good team and those days uh, looking at the structures look I mean from 15s and school rugby what do you see is there a change in between now uh, actually the structures I think have grown especially in 2000 and this uh, this current season, because uh, as as you know now, we are in the final two weeks and still the league is up for grabs. So that kind of says the quality of the teams that we have coming up against. So every week is tough, and I think the competition has grown from uh, from those days up till now, which is good good for the sport and also good for under 20 Sri Lanka rugby. You have had a long-lasting season as a player, as a schools player, as a club player, and as a national player. What's your defining moment in your career? I think captaining the national side is, I think, right up there. Uh, and also uh, winning the Asian Five Nations for the first time in 2010. So that's really big. And uh, beating Kazakhstan for the first time, beating Singapore for the first time, beating Chinese Taipei away for the first time. I think the, those wins are pretty, uh, pretty big and I uh, hold them uh, pretty close to my heart. While you talk about those glory days, uh, Dushant, uh, now are you worried that Sri Lanka is playing in Division 1 level in the Asian circuit? Uh, I'm not worried because uh, at the, I think we still have the material to make it to the top and I think the current team has prepared quite quite well with what they have and even the lineup looks pretty solid. They still, uh, still got some senior guys who are experienced enough to uh, bring this home. And even I know the coach pretty well. I mean, Karthi, he's he's been good. So I think they got what they, they take to make it to the next stage. Well, in your royal colours, undefeated champions in 2002. Your thoughts? Yeah, that that was a very uh, special year for us because coming into the season we had like uh, maybe 12 colorsmen and. Uh, even the previous year we were unbeaten, although we were unable to win the league because of a policy decision that we didn't play Thurston on. Uh, so coming into the season, we knew we had a pretty good good side, and also Coach Laga uh, did a marvelous job that year, and the boys also gelled uh, gelled with him. We had a pretty good uh, team culture. And uh, going into the Bradby, we didn't have any records in mind. We just wanted to go uh, go there and play our best in our final year, and and the uh, result just took care of itself. Well, now uh, coach, uh, of course, uh, Luke, with the different uh, success you are getting into, is almost your fifth year running with a Royal College. Yes. How do you see your coaching philosophy? How do you describe it? Uh, so the main thing what I want to do is I want to help the players grow you know, on and off the field. So I want to help them become the best that they can be, you know, as well as an athlete and as well as a person. So I mean, if we achieve that, I mean, that's a great thing. Uh, all Blacks have this saying, you know, uh, uh, good men make good All Blacks. So I mean, if we can achieve that with our players, I think, I think we're on the right path. Good men make a good All Blacks, uh, good boys make good Royal College Rugby? Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. Indeed, it's, uh, it's relevant to anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In, in any organisation, I think that's pretty practical. I mean, if you have guys who are willing to, you know, do the hard work and who are also uh, coachable and who are also willing to 
lesson and yeah i think uh, half of your job is done i mean you just have to guide them in the right path and they'll just take it and also talking about your coaching dushan now your players come getting injured quite frequently we see so many injuries coming through the acls etc etc but you also have you are a qualified uh, rehab personnel yeah. talking about that actually it uh, starts mainly in the pre season i think you have to take some steps to uh, minimize or kind of cut down on the risk but having said that i mean you can't prevent things like acl I and mean, uh, even at the highest level you get players getting injured and now with the schools competition so tough and the intensity is so high it's very hard to keep players from getting injured but i think you can take some measures to try and uh, minimize the damage that it might cause to your players so now you are a coach since 2012 with royal college and uh, what we heard from your head coach sarath martis is that uh, when we ask about luke he said in his 30 years rugby career he is very lucky to have dushant luke as his assistant coach because nowadays some of the assistant coach just put the blame on the head coach when the team goes team fails actually to deliver your thoughts about how is it working with the veteran coach it's it's been good i mean i've i've learned heaps uh, because he's 30 plus years of experience is uh, it's it's massive and it's done wonders for royal college rugby and uh, you know the way he reads the game is sometimes 3 4 steps ahead on how we uh, we see it and he has also helped me on making the step from Uh, uh, making the transition from player to coach, because how you look at the game as a player, and then how you look at the game as a coach, you know, it's two different things. So I mean, he has groomed me in those areas in you know how to you know start reading this and how to approach this game in a coach point of view. All right, now here's some interesting stats. 57 line out driving mall fries since 2013 and you're pretty much the unsung hero because you have worked so hard with the uh, forwards coach and uh, with the help of Sanat Martis how can you do that that's incredible effort look well, at i think is 57 not counting this is and you have to ask hamza is how many he scored this he year he scored 11 yeah i think he is the highest try scorer <laughs> because of that but actually the credit should go to the boys i mean the players that i've coached uh, in all those years so uh, i I've, i've just done the tech technique part of it and just given them some guidelines on how to react uh, to what the opposition throws at them in different scenarios but the players who have you know played in the forwards for you know this 3 4 seasons have absolutely been great because they've been putting a lot of hard work and commitment end of the day they are the ones who are you know going uh, going out there and taking the battering and you know do, getting the job done so i think the credit should go to them absolutely it's the hard work of the end result is the all about the hard work but uh, also last year supun varnakulu surya scoring the highest number of tries Are you not surprised that you should have played hooker to score those tries? But we have seen you playing as number eight, scoring plenty of try, uh, tries in the red jersey and also CHNFC colours, yeah. and also with the uh, Candy Sports Club. You played three years uh, in there. Yeah, uh, I played three seasons uh, up in Candy. I mean, uh, all three clubs I played, I enjoyed, and the clubs have been good to me. And my three years in Candy also, I really enjoyed uh, playing under. Uh, coach Johan Taylor who's uh, who's helped me a lot and who's also a very close friend of the friend of mine and uh, same with Sia I mean I uh, played under my uh, school coach Laga there I mean also I enjoyed that I have lots of friends in both clubs so I mean uh, it's it's been good and uh, also talking about Bradby just a week on you all uh, didn't uh, do really well in the first round of this year's single schools rugby league dushan but you have well peaked on right time do you think so uh it's hard to say that we are peaking because uh, i know we we have been playing relatively okay in the past couple of weeks but uh, the bradby is a different ball game I think even Trinity is pretty focused on what they need to do, and we are pretty focused on what we need to do. And so, uh, to, it's hard to judge, you know, how how the teams are going to to play on the Bradby Shield because both 
every Trini uh, uh, Trinity rugby player and every Royal rugby, rugby player, their dream is to play in the Bradby and to win the Bradby. So I think you can't expect anything less from any of these boys when they come up against each other than to you know, just go out there and do their absolute best. When uh, Gary Link uh, interviewed uh, the Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp, when you leave some players out of your squad, do you tell the players why? The answer he gave is that uh, if it's a game on Sunday, I won't say anything they can ask me on Monday. There's a huge squad in the Royal team. If you leave any players out, do you, what do you tell the players or do they ask you why? Uh, I think it's uh, the way we run practice and the way we run our structure is self-explanatory. I think the boys know that if if they are left out, they haven't been doing their fair share. So I, I think most of the boys, when they get left out, they have a clear understanding of why they got left out. Because if you watch the video on Monday, then it's pretty clear that, you know, which, which boys have, have been, you know, putting their body on the line. So I think, and, and also uh, Martis and myself, we are, we, are, we are pretty close to the players, so we you know, sit down and you know, maybe have a one-on-one -on -one with them and say, you know, son, you know, these are the areas that you have to look at. And then come next week, if you get these things sorted out, then you'll be probably back in the side or at least have a very good chance in making the starting lineup. While we take that uh, coach's fault, and, but nowadays we also see it's the referee's fault. So many uh, uh, come, uh, news coming, blaming the referee in the media. Your thoughts? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to, you know, when a, when a game goes wrong, it's just hard to single, single out one person. I mean, uh, let it be a ref or a linesman or a coach or a player or something because it has so many other contributing factors towards it. I mean, the ref could have made a wrong call, but, you know, a, a boy would have probably knocked the ball on a few faces back, you know, things. Yeah. Things like that, but having said said that, I, I think the refs have done a pretty good job so far. I mean, with the limited amounts of refs that we have, also because we don't have a large number of refs, and so we have to really thank the guys who are turning up on every weekend, also to you know blow these games. So yeah, so there there is always room for improvement. I mean, whether you're a ref or a player or a coach or in in every aspect. So. So I think what is important is that once you once you make a mistake, that uh, that you go back and take take time, and, you know, to try and correct yourself and you know, better yourself in the coming weeks. Absolutely, very good point, uh, Dushant. And finally, we just want to ask you for a royalist. It is the league or the Bradby. Uh, as a, as a royalist, I would say the Bradby, but. As a coach, it would be nice to win the league as well, you know, moving towards the Bradby. I mean, like I said, in 2002 and 2001, we were un, uh, unbeaten, but we didn't win the, win the league. So, I mean, as a royalist, Bradby is our main focus. I mean, it's, it's, it's been our prime uh, thing for, I mean, um, so many years because it's very prestigious to us and to Trintians as well and the camaraderie we share with the Trintians and the entire build up towards the Red Bull, it's it's awesome. So uh, but as a as a coach, you know, winning the league it's you know it's always a plus and it's also something that the players can you know, you know uh, hold close when when they get uh, older in life. All right, thank you very much, Dushant Leke, for your uh, contribution and time being here. And we wish you all the very best for the upcoming uh, league finals as well as the Brad Beef first leg and second leg. Thank you very much, Shabi. Good to have thanks, you here. Thanks a lot for having me. So that's the DFCC No and Grow. Dushant Leke, the former Sri Lanka captain and the current Royal Assistant Coach and Strength and Condition Coach, talking to www.thepapri.com. And I'm Sabir Kadis signing off, sharing the passion.